As an immigrant myself, I understand the sacrifices and hardships that immigrants experience. I heard from children, Mr. Speaker, afraid to go to school out of fear that their parents will be taken away while they are at school. I heard from people whose lives are still in limbo because they have no idea what's going to happen next. That was Democratic Washington Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal, the first Indian American woman to be elected to the House, addressing fears and uncertainty that many immigrants are facing under the new administration as we face these executive orders today. Congresswoman Jayapal joins me now. Thank you very much for being with us. Um, Thank you, Andrea. Pleasure. I, well, I know we haven't seen the actual wording. We have seen a lot and reported a lot as to what we anticipate hearing from the president today. Um, what is your response? Well, I think, unfortunately, uh, Donald Trump is carrying through on very divisive smoke and mirrors campaign promises. He won uh, the election in part on the back of scapegoating immigrants. And I had hoped that transitioning to president, he would actually get to work in finding a solution for a much more complex and nuanced immigration system, which everybody across the country agrees needs to be fixed. And there was a bipartisan solution in the Senate. 68 bipartisan votes a couple of years ago. We need Donald Trump to on those kinds of solutions and not these kinds of things that he is uh, going to be putting out in executive order today. And your concerns also about uh, the, the steps against people largely Muslim from certain countries, which seems to be getting around the broader Muslim ban, which would be unconstitutional, but accomplishing the same purpose and also targeting uh, Muslim refugees, largely from places like Syria, and mostly women and children. That's right. And Andrea, if you remember back after 9-11, we had the NSEERS program, the special registration program, and that too had, I think it was 26 countries, 25 of them were Muslim countries, and that's how they were able to sort of get around that, that uh, idea that somehow it's a religious ban, but we have to be very clear that this would be the first time that we are actually instituting a ban of this measure um, based on religious grounds, and that's that's really unacceptable. And I think it's not only that, it's the refugee executive order, which halts refugees at a time of tremendous global instability, um, tremendous tragedy around the country, and cuts refugee admissions in half um, at a time, again, where we, as, a, as a, one of the most industrialized countries in the world, need to really play out our responsibility to the rest of the world, including to people who are fleeing war-torn countries, mothers, children, families, that's the majority of refugees in this country. Is there anything that you think that uh, like-minded members can do, uh, mostly Democrats, but there are some Republicans who agree with you? I think that's right. And, you know, refugee resettlement in particular has been a, an area of tremendous bipartisan support for many, many uh, decades, actually. And so I hope that we um, step up and, in a bipartisan way, address the fact that we have a responsibility to refugees, to asylees along the border. That's another. Um, uh, that, that President Trump will also stop asylum seekers at the southern border. And also, I believe that if he wants to focus on jobs and if he wants to focus on the economy, there is no question that passing a comprehensive immigration reform bill would boost our economy, would provide jobs, and would really bring $1.5 trillion into the economy over the next 10 years. So we have a lot of opportunity here to find common ground on the issue of immigration. These actions that he's taking today do not give me hope that that's the direction he's heading, but he has a chance to actually move forward on an issue that does have tremendous support from both sides of the aisle. And so we are working very hard to try to garner that bipartisan support to make sure that people understand that this is about democratic values. It's about who America is as a country. And, you know, from a very personal perspective, I can tell you that as an immigrant to this country, it says a lot to those of us who have come here. Um, um, believing that America stands for certain values, and I really hope that we continue to uphold those. Well, it's great to meet you. Thanks so much for coming on the show, and I uh, look forward to continuing this conversation. Thank you future. so much, Andrea. Thank you, Congresswoman.